What's up, everybody? Welcome to Mystics MMOs. I am your host, Mystic Raven. All right. <clears throat> so today I'm going to introduce you guys to my stamina necromancer build called Hollow. This build, you know, from conception, I knew where I wanted to go with it. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I had to make a few alterations. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the build. Prior to any buffs or applications, we're sitting at 32,000 max stamina. Slightly shy of 20,000 health, which I'm actually fine with. Stamina recovery before pot is 1755. The sustain on this build is amazing. Simply, simply amazing. Weapon damage before proc, 4,000 or buff, 4,808. Weapon crit before procs, 57.9. Spell resistance, 1350, uh, 13. Physical 13. We've allocated all points into stamina. We are once again using the Lava Foot Soup and um, Salt Trees. We are of course using the Thief Mundus um, with all the changes since Blackwood and uh, Flames of Ambition. And of course, let's go ahead and get into the sets. Now, primary set we're gonna be utilizing is the Vicious Ophidian. Now this is a static build. There is no you know, specialized weapons on this build. This build can get you through pretty much 90 something percent of the content in the game. You're not going to have a problem with this build. It scales really nice, does a lot of damage. Of course, I'm still learning a lot about stam rotation and uptime and all of this, but once again, amazing. So with this, we're because I'm a Bosner, because I'm a Bosner, I was able to pull off the great sword. We're going to use the weapon damage enchantment for those nice damage spikes. We're going to use it precise. This set you can get out of, um, you know, uh, Hellra Citadel. You can do vet. That's you, I did it on vet, of course, but you can acquire this on normal if you want to farm it up. Um, but yeah, really nice set. Uh, critical minor slayer, critical weapon damage, reduce the cost of your salmon abilities by 8%. When an enemy you recently damaged dies, you restore 2,397 stamina and gain major expedition for eight seconds. Um, so really, really good. Um, of course, we're, because this is static, we're also gonna need the bow. Now you're gonna notice this is the Nernhone. And why? Because my critical rating, the bow gets a critical, um, slight critical passive, but I want Nernhone because I wanna maintain that spell damage. I mean the weapon damage. So I really, really want that weapon damage. Of course, we're still gonna do poison damage um, glyph. If you wanna use infuse, you can. I do recommend the Nernholm for, you know, bar swapping and maintaining, you know, uh, weapon damage scaling due to the the pen value. So very, very important why you wanna use Nernholm because the sword gets a passive towards weapon damage in the 2H, right? Okay, gets 284, and of course, the bow does not get that passive. So, you get a critical chance rating. That's why you want to do that. Okay, very, very, very important. It's called indifferent values. So, we want to maintain that. Because we are using the Vicious Fidian, we can use Molakina, proc this up, because that's going to increase our weapon damage um, for six seconds. But it costs our abilities 8% more, but Vicious Ophidian offsets that cost. So we get free weapon damage for six seconds. So you want to maintain this, you lay everything down, you proc it up, weapon damage spikes, all your damage effects scale. Really, really good. And the more you weapon damage you have, the less pen you need once you go over 6.5. So I'll illustrate on the target dummy what our weapon damage can get up to and what we can you know associate now uh our secondary set is going to be tiscovins um now this is infused heavy so i have a six one 
People are going to ask, why not 7 medium? Well, <clears throat> I don't have it unlocked, but heavy armor gets... I'm still trying to do that. Heavy armor gets passives towards recovery. So you really want to take advantage of that. So could you go 7 medium? You could. But I like infused because I get that scale factor due to the undaunted passive towards the stamina uh, pull. And then I like the heavy for all the other perks. Um, this is the vine, max stamina. Now to Scavins, critical, critical penetration. I did have Hundings on this. And Hundings worked great on raid target, but not standard four. So to offset that value, we went with this so we could get the penetrating value and maintain critical values. So that we took a little bit down to get a little bit more crit. Yes, this, this will scale a little bit more crit also than Hundings. But the most important part, we need a little bit of extra pen value to adjust between the two because we're not using the lover and we're not using sharpened traits because also um, the necromancer gets a passive when they cast a creature, they get penetration. Now, since I'm a Bosner even, and I do recommend Bosner if you're going to use this. If any other race, you're going to need to run a Maul with a Sharpened Bow. Okay? Any other race. Um, but with this, I don't need to. I get that 700. I get that 14. I wouldn't even use the Scavins on another, you know, one. I would just, because that would be overpen. You could, but I don't want to overpen either. So that was the, the kicker for me. All right, now, um, so this is the vine. Um, Mulakina shoulders, the vine. Uh, Tuscavin's belt, the vine. Bracers of uh, Vicious Fidian, the vine. Tuscavin's guards, the vine. Uh, Tuscavin's boots, the vine. We have necklace of Fidium infused weapon damage. I have one bloodthirsty weapon damage and then one, another infused weapon damage. Now, a lot of people are like, why don't you run two bloodthirsty? <clears throat> Because this only bloodthirsty only kicks in at 90%. While you might want to utilize that in a trial, most four mans, you're not getting the most weapon damage or the most bang out of your buck for weapon damage scaling. So two infuse works out 90% better than waiting 10 per, for that 10% drop. So heads up. All right. <clears throat> now. That's pretty much about it for the setups. Now let's go ahead and uh, proc up a few of the stats. Now you will be dependent. I, I do stress this on brutality potions and I do recommend using the savagery. Oh yeah, let's get into the skills. Tell mystic. Okay. Now you can reorganize some of this due to the passives, but this is how I've set my bar up. But if you can optimize it better and you feel comfortable with a better, a different type of rotation, by all means, go ahead. Only exception is, of course, the, you know, weapon abilities that have to stay on bar. But we have the Blighted Blast Bones. We have the Skeleton Archer. We have Endless Hail. We have Caltrops. We have Detonating Siphon. And, of course, we have the Pestilence Colossus. Now, I've maintained the stack effect for this bar due to the fighter's guild. Yes, I'm going to lose on critical. Now, it's kind of important though, because Minor Slayer, Slayer is giving us 9%. Okay, that's kind of important. I could maybe afford to, you know, put Barb Trap here, rearrange things for the critical modifier for the Necromancer. And if you want to do that, you can feel free to do so. But once again, we keep Camouflage Hunter on this bar. Why? Because the scale factor, If we like the minor berserk even though a lot of times in trials we can see a hundred percent uptime a lot of times in other pug groups you don't so keeping this you know constant is a benefit on top of the scale factor okay so on this bar we have stampede ruinous scythe this is amazing for me even though i'm not scaling health i still get healing i get stamina recovery it is simply amazing. Now, you can, if you don't want to use that spammable, you can use Brawler in the 2H. Or, if you want more single target focus damage, 
with the passive. You can use Venomous Skulls. Venomous Skulls will hit harder on single target, okay? But it's a single target. It's not an AoE. So keep that in mind. Yes, you can go with the Venomous Skull for, you know, a single target rotation, okay? So yes. And would that hit harder? Absolutely. Would you get the other additional passives to the critical once the drop happens under 25%? Absolutely. But like I said, you can rearrange this bar as you see fit. But I do enjoy the Ruminous Scythe. It just keeps me, you know, he, you know, healing if the healer's rezzing. Um, and I'm recovering stamina at the same time. Really nice. But once again, you're going to be dependent on pots. Uh, Barb Trapped, Executioner, Camouflage Hunter, and of course, Flawless Stormbreaker. Okay. So, and if you want to rearrange these abilities to your specification, to your rotation, feel free to do so. Um, I just like the setup, but if you want to do, you know, change it up, you can. The build's solid, though. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead. Once we throw up this, you're going to see our penetrating uh, value go up to 3-1 and 4-6, okay? So we get that 4-6. Now I'm just kind of... And then we're hitting up the 24. And you can just keep procking this. And you get that nice damage spike. Now, once you do that, you hit about 65. Once everything's procked up, you hit over 7, 7,200. Easy. But our weapon crits at 72 with the minor savagery when applied. So that's what's really nice. You get uh, Now, it's a little bit more than I would shoot for. But it is nice. We hit those pen values. We don't over pen. In certain dynamics, you're going to see a slight difference depending on tank in that configuration. But when it comes to overall potential, the scale factor works out so much better with this build. And if you're a necromancer who's tired of having to switch out builds based on content, right? This build works out nice for multi-content accessibility very a lot of sustain a lot of perks a lot of fun thank you guys i'm mr craven this is mystics mmos have a nice day